Patrick Fendaro here, co-founder at Vetted Biz. Excited to have on Mindy York, who's the president of Baby Otter Swim School. I was fortunate enough to enroll my own daughter, a uh, 17-month daughter in the program. Um, she learned a lot over those five days, um, and I can definitely be a client, a cu customer testimonial uh, for their service. But we're going to talk about the, the industry, specific opportunity with Baby Otter Swim School. But first, turning it over to Mindy, how did you get started in, in this industry? Could you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Yes, um, I got started in this industry literally due to a near tragedy when I found my child at the bottom of the pool. So my background was not aquatics. My background was business. Yet I was at a community pool. You know, I was a helicopter mom. At least I thought I was watching my child, right? Just like we all say we do. And I turned around for one quick second to put a towel onto my son. And I turn around, I tell Stacy, please sit still. Nope. Got out of the chair. All of a sudden, we can't find Stacy. And we're looking down. I'm like, where's Stacy? Oh, there she is, mom, laying on the bottom of the pool looking up. So, you know, you go into survival mode at that yeah. point. I'd already been trained in CPR. I knew what to do. Very different when you're doing it on your own child, when there's no breath sounds, right? Silent killer. Never heard her walk down the steps. So thank God we were able to, you know, bring her back went to the hospital. She was cleared. From that minute on, my life changed. I got involved with Marlene. Marlene's the original founder of Baby Otter who created the program. She was an educator and created a program 45 years ago that was based on lesson plans because when she was looking 45 years ago, no one was addressing children under the age of four, yet those are the children that were drowning. So, you know, we went to other organizations and I'm not saying anything about them. Everybody's good if they can make an impact, but they weren't addressing the younger children who were getting away and, and getting into a pool. Well, from and my so limited my, experience, it seems like it's not my problem. Like having a community pool, like I couldn't even bring the, the instructor, Daniela, to the community pool, certain pools, like they don't want to deal with it, a crying baby, but it's like, we're not doing this for our own welfare. This is to save save lives. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we get a lot of that. <laughs> and um, it's crazy. <laughs> it was shocking to, to see that firsthand, like the lack mm -hmm. of empathy, whether it's with the people working at the pool or, you know, the homeowner association. But right. I just saw that over a five day period. And it was really so totally worth it for me having my daughter go through that. But just all the roadblocks in the way to your mission of, of saving a lot of lives, you think you'd have a lot more support. You would think, right? And, you know, all we're there, we're there for 30 minutes. We're very <laughs> loving while we do it. And it's the parents, you know, the parents hired us. So if they're okay with the child crying, everybody else really should just butt out. But Suck it up. Yes, right. It just doesn't work that way. And their opinions, you know, <laughs> you know, we'll leave that for another podcast about opinions, about what we do. So then Marlene created this program based on lesson plans. So whether it's a Miami instructor, Daniela, or my other instructors, wherever they are, now my franchisees, everybody follows a program. So what sets our, our school apart is we're based on a program, not lessons. So there's a lot of other schools out there and they're all great um, where a child can go and take lesson after lesson until their child hopefully learns to swim. With us, it's five days. We have a beginning, a middle and end. We always hope that the child's going to graduate with flying colors. Sometimes a child may lack in something else, which is why we created many different levels, all based on five days, it goes all the way up to swim team training. With the results as a child fell into the water, they would know what to do. And that's how the program started. Two women on a mission, never, neither of us were ever in aquatics, but got into it by accident. And now knowing, you know, that Florida is one of the leading states in drowning, we really want to make for our state a zero drowning state. Since COVID, drownings are up 70%. So, you know, Marlene has a little statistic that's super scary that, uh, you know, this past, this coming year, there'll be five kindergarten classrooms not filled because of the children that have drowned. Terrible. Yet it's very preventable. You know, I always say to parents when they talk about it, well, it's money, it's this, it's that. Do you think about that when you put your child in a car seat? Would you never put your child in a car seat 
because you might have to go out and spend a hundred. The cost of the program is like double the price of a car seat. It's pretty reasonable for, I mean, 90% you know, of American families. Being a parent on the other end, I don't even know how you put a price tag on what yeah. we do. And I'm going to tell you right out there that my instructors go through very intense training and they're some of the best in the industry because not only are they well-trained, but they feel it from so many different levels and they all love what they do. I saw that so firsthand. Right. Daniela's, you know, been with me probably the longest. She's like another child to me. So I'm super happy for her that she's going to be starting her own franchise in Coral Gables and whoever has the benefit of uh, having Daniela. It's great. And tell me a little bit how you even decided to franchise this concept, because it seemed like you had a successful corporate business that you were helping right. kids at least throughout South, South Florida, learn how to learn South how Florida. to survive in a pool. So we started thinking about franchising when the drowning statistics just co- continually going up, you know, and, and after COVID, that was a that was a game changer where, you know what, my staff's amazing, but because we do private and we travel, there's only a certain amount of kids we can reach. But if we help, which has always been something Marlene and I have always wanted to do, enough people become entrepreneurs. And I love to teach new entrepreneurs then we as a group can save more children from drowning. Just a hundred franchisees doing the four kids a week, we can save over 14,000 children. That's a lot of kids. And how many kids do do you think over these last 40 years have you and Marlene basically basically trained in in terms of swim swim survival? That's a great question. Um, I'm going to tell you, you know, tens of thousands of children. I was thinking like 50,000, something like that. Yeah, I I don't have an exact number. Not enough, obviously since the drownings are so out of control, like they are so out of control. You know, I can't even begin to tell you just over the past week, there have been three, you know, it's Thanksgiving. My heart breaks. I I try not to cry when I think about it to these families who only wish, you know, like we got a call a couple of weeks ago, a mom had called in and she was interested. She goes, well, you know what? Maybe I'll wait. Okay. Calls back like three days later in a total panic, speaks to my staff that, no, no, no. Can you do it now? Like right now, like tomorrow, my neighbor's hmm. child just drowned. So on, yeah, I mean, the calls we get, which just blow your mind. I'm telling you, Patrick. So, you know, I always encourage people to make this a priority. There, there's nothing more important. We live in Florida. This is a life skill. And like, like you and said, it, I mean, you were at a community pool where I don't have my own single family home with a, a pool, but we're regularly at you know, friends' pools, my father's building has a pool. So even if you don't own a pool, it will be a little more cumbersome, like finding a facility to do, to do the lesson, but you still need to do this. It's still a required, it should be a required thing for your, your, your child. Absolutely. 77% of the drownings happen in someone else's pool. Hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your pool. And we always encourage layers of protection, you know, which is uh, alarms on the doors. If you hear a sound, the first place you look is the pool. Remove all toys from a pool because toys act like a magnet. Make sure your pool fence is always locked. Move any items away that can be pushed up to a pool fence. Perfect example, we were scheduled to do a three-year-old and you know the child pushed a little tykes table up to the pool fence, climbed over, and she didn't make it. So sad. She was scheduled on Monday. This happened over the weekend. So that's why I say they're 30-year-old midgets. They're very smart. They see water. It's like a magnet. But if you give them the skills, they can survive falling into a body of water. So that's how we ended up in our in the franchising. I know, you know, we're very fortunate. We just came out of the gate in May. We've sold to some amazing human beings that have the same passion that we do. We're so blessed and we're so excited for this coming year for them to succeed from teachers to CFOs to general managers of resorts to just everyday people who go, I want to be part of this. I want to dive more into the current franchisees that you have and and that you're recruiting. But first, just more on the uh, public side. Are pediatricians advocates? Are they helping you? Who, who's who's who is kind of like advocates in this this great, greater mission that you have? Well, we've been around a long time, and we're originally from Broward County, so I can tell you that most of the pediatricians know us, um, have used us, and recommend us. Actually, that's how we ended up with Miss Layla, who is our special needs Olympian, 
because her parents, everyone turned them down and said the kids, both of them are autistic, can't be taught. <laughs> of course they can. Yeah. Go to Mindy and Marlene. Well, now 13 years later, Layla's a 25 gold and silver medalist in the Olympics. That's wild. So a lot of the pediatricians know us. Yes, they're big advocates of what we do. You know, the American Academy of Pediatrics a few years ago after Bodie Miller lost his child and there became a big movement to change the required age for drowning, for water survival lessons before it was four <laughs> or now it's one because as soon as a child can crawl, they can get to a pool. My wife's French and we, we spent a lot of time in the summer in France and it doesn't exist at all. Water survival training in, in Europe. And everyone, when we were starting to talk about the U.S. and 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 that you can start much earlier, there the parents like that concept. Out, yep. We have a lot of listeners that aren't in the U.S. Is this up? Like, how do you see it developing in other countries? Is there a certain country that's ahead of the curve? Israel and what Israel does. And by the way, we are expanding internationally. And you know, France is one of the um, countries on our to do list. Greece. Very cool. Israel, Italy, there's a big calling for it. You know, we know people because of all of our connections in the resorts that have come in from all over the world and go, please come here. Yeah, we will. For sure, we will. But what Israel does, you know, they've always been a, a proactive country is they actually pay a certain percentage for a child to take lessons to prevent what could happen. Listen, if a child doesn't survive, Okay, so now we're burying a child, God forbid. Yeah. If they do and they're on life support and on feeding tubes. What's that cost? Like 50K, 100K to society? More than that. Yeah. And so, that's why we've tried to reach out to insurance companies. Yeah. Help. Hey, this right? makes sense. It's the right thing to do and it makes economic exactly. sense. Exactly. Exactly. Why not pay? Give a person. Israel pays 85%. Why not pay something towards it? So it's always a mission. It's always something else that we think about that we're reaching out. So, as we collectively become a bigger organization with amazing human beings that are part of our group now, we'll reach it. We'll make Florida zero drowning state. Listen, I met our governor. I went right over to him and I said, uh, you know what, Governor DeSantis, I know that you don't know yeah. that your state is the leading state in drownings and you have these little ones. And he looked at me like, what? Yes. So he's part of my mission as well to continue my conversation with him. Well, it's it's exciting, and it's it's it, some could view it as daunting, but I think the the potential of the lives that are saved in Florida, our, our home state, but across the U.S. and then as you expand abroad, it's it's super motivating. Exactly. Listen, we just met with a, a two amazing women who want to, and we've known one of them for a long time from SCORE, who want to take over the Caribbean. Let's do it because, yeah. you know, there's no swim. I mean, we've been in the Bahamas a million times and people saw us because of a child, you know, young child that was over there practicing at a resort. So it's very needed around the world. So we're hoping to make a big impact and, uh, you know, change lives worldwide. That's for sure. Helping people is how you do it. Exactly. And tell me a little bit about your, your franchise development efforts. We met a couple of months back through Tom Spadea at the, the Franchise Expo of the South. And I saw a lot of interest, people coming up to your booth. Um, tell me, how, how is the franchise development efforts coming along? You know what? It's going really well. I'm thrilled beyond your wildest imagination. We're really picky about the kind of people that we like to be associated with. Um, but we have, uh, we've done well. And they are, like I said, they range. I have um, three teachers, a uh, CFO of, a, of an organization, a general manager and a, develop, a development for another resort. Um, actually, I think I have four teachers now that I'm thinking about it. Daniela, who's part of our team. And then there's Tara, who was also part of our team, who was a preschool teacher and said, I want to do this myself. So she just took over Coral Springs and Parkland. And do you so see we're it? super excited. A very diverse organization, but such amazing human beings. Well, I'm sure you're going to learn I mean, so much from all these franchisees as, as they share sure. their previous experience. And then that goes back to other franchisees. Yes, exactly. Well, the teachers always say to me, you know, the ones that we have is that we love to teach, but we don't love to teach in a building for eight hours a day under yeah. the ruling of this and that and the other, and they're not making enough money, right? So we take our expertise and our love for children and we bring it into the water with a, a curriculum. They love the fact that this is curriculum based. So yeah. one of my teachers is in Long Island. We just opened in New York. 
And for the franchisees that are, are joining, are most of them going to be instructors slash franchisees, like true owner operators giving the classes? Mm-hmm. Or are they going to hire instructors? How, how's that going to, how's that looking out? That's a great question. The majority of them are owner operated. Um, a few of them, um, the ones that are still in corporate America, but trying to ease their way out have some support from an instructor. But we are very hands-on owners. Anybody that you speak to will tell you that Marlene and I are 100% hands-on. We have a great relationship with all of our franchisees, their family to us. Their success is our success, obviously, but we care a great deal about, you know, the mission. I'm in the field a lot helping train so they know, you know, they're working with master trainers. We're available pretty much around the clock to support them. And, uh, you know, one of my, one of my franchisees bought one territory and then he realized, well, Jupiter was just right across the road up there. So I'm going to buy Jupiter. Very and cool. he did. Yeah. He's great. And what are the costs like? How, how much for someone that's looking to leave corporate America, how much money should they have, including working capital to, to get the business off the ground? It's a minimal investment for the return. And the beauty of ours is there's no brick and mortar. Ours is a traveling swim school. So you need a car, you need a magnet, you need a computer, you need the branded material, all of our, no one will ever wonder where a baby otter instructor is. Um, And you need the training and you're off and running. And within 45 to the max is 60 days, you're already out making money. So that's the beauty of this. Our franchises right now start at 62.5. You know, we've had a lot of support from Spadia. I love them. They are the, the greatest. Um, I can't talk enough about the support that we have received, which, of course, inevitably turns into support that we can give for our franchisees. And, you know, Caleb is already up and running. The others are not far behind. So they're going to have an amazing year. So the return on this is, you know, we charge, as you well know. Uh, 650 for the five day program. And instructors get that all day, every day. Franchisees get that all day, every day. New York is 750 because it's the market that will, you know, it, it bears that market. So, you know, people can do their own math. If you do four kids a week, you know, it, it turns out to be a, a, a really nice beginning of your franchise where, you know, you're making your money back and you're able to support yourself. Um, my franchisees aren't happy with just doing four. They want to do eight. They start, they sit down and they start doing the math. Let's do it. So uh, they're very motivated and they love it. You know, they're with a child two and a half hours, as you know, you know, 30 minutes a day, five days, two and a half hours. They can knock out seven or eight of them easy in a week. Wow. Yeah. No, it makes I sense. can do it and I'm older than a lot of them. They can do it. <laughs> yeah. No, the economic model, it's very scalable, especially if you're in a set very. area and you're going pool to pool. And the beauty of it is that we don't just do our, you know, state certified program, Turn Kick Reach. We do, we go all the way up to swim team training. I mean, we've had Layla and look at her now. She's literally, she has just been called to Washington to speak on behalf of the Florida Special Olympics. So we couldn't be more proud of of her. I wonder if you have other other Olympians that you don't know about of these like 50,000 or so. This one is one that we have followed. She's very dear to our heart. She comes to Orlando. She stays with us. Um, family, right? It's all about family. We have a very big extended family of Otterettes. So 62,500, you know, corporate executive, CFO type, that should be totally fine. But an educator, that, that might be a, a lot of money. Do they get outside financing? How does that yes. work? They get outside financing. We, you know, have been had the pleasure of working with Benetrends. Uh, Michael's been amazing um, where he's helped them, you know, utilize their 401k. That's a really a very popular program, helped Caleb. So, um, you know, that's what we're utilizing right now. And how do you divide the territories? Great question. So we do territories of up to 100,000 or so families with children under the age of 10. Some of them are a little bit over. It's all good. We're good with that. The so better they'll, successful they'll they have, are, they'll have a hundred thousand at bats. So they they, they could, uh, the addressable I'm market sorry. for them should be a hundred thousand households, essentially. With children under the age of ten, right? Okay. So it's a pretty big territory. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you right now, from being in the industry for thirty six years now, a lot of our business is built on referrals. And because parents will see a child and they'll go, how did that happen? My kid's been in swimming lessons for six months and can do that. And I've spent $2,000 and, you know, a lot of it is based on watching our kids swim. 
Yeah, no, it makes sense. I'm sure with my daughter, Olivia, we're going to have a lot of referrals as parents are kind of like amazed that a 17 month baby is able to like kick for like get to the side of the pool, like six feet. Yeah. It's amazing. And the more you practice, you know, the more we can expand her distance and, uh, you know, then you'll be calling me and going, how do I get her out of the water? That's what happens. Huh. And we'll tell you, we don't fix that problem, but let's move her on to the next level. And then Because the next yeah. level, we take her across and she does a roll. 17 months, that's the magic number. That's the age I almost lost my child. So, wow. uh, what what age would it. you recommend people starting? As soon as they're crawling. Okay. So it could be... So we start five, them at nine months. months. Yeah. Yep. And they they do amazing because remember, they've been in water for nine months. So the sooner we can get them back in the water the better off they are. I always love when I'm training new franchisees or my staff's training them and they're like, oh my God, but this baby's so little. You got this. Just treat the baby (laughs) exactly the same way. They go ahead and they're like, oh my God, you told us about it. And then once they do it, they, you know, you get bit in this industry. When you start with a child who can't do anything, right? And then at the end of the week, they're swimming like amazing, right? It's like you get bit like, all right, let me do another one. Let me do another one. Let me save another life. It's like yeah, a natural line. Right? Um, and I always say. My medical professional friends, like doctor friends, like they, it's like an addiction when you're, when you're doing clinical work and you're saving lives that you just keep on yeah. wanting to do it. I always tell them, you know, you're going to hold a child in your hands, right? And then at the end of that week, you leave knowing that you made a difference. And they all, they get very emotional. They get very attached and, you know, the parents get attached to the instructors too. And the franchisees, like they're seeing it. Caleb's, you know, out doing it now and he sees the relationships that he's building. I tell them all, business is about relationships. Everything else follows. Yeah, that's well said. And I mean, this is like the character of the people that are doing this. Like you're you're not going to go into this profession if like you're looking to like scheme people and like this is a really a a mission focused type type job type business that you could be a franchisee of and you know compared to being a a public school educator make significantly more money significantly literally they caleb will triple his income year one he is out there man he's killing it but you know it's funny we were at the tampa show and he came because I'm like, you know, would you be willing to come? You don't have to. Would you be willing to come and just speak as a franchisee? Because, you know, exactly. I'm going to talk positive. You know, I love what I do and this and that. But let them hear from somebody. And there's no script. You tell them what you feel. Exactly. And it, it went really well. People could relate to him because he was a teacher and he was able to do it and why he chose to do it. And uh, it was great. It was a good experience. Outside of Florida, where where are you most excited and expanding in the U.S.? Where can you have the biggest impact where there are a high percentage of drowning deaths per per the state population? Well, really, it's everywhere. But the top states are Texas, Arizona. And I'll tell you, the, a huge market is New York. Hmm. And that started through a video that went viral. I was training one of my uh, instructors in Jupiter. And this woman posted it. Her sister lives in New York, called her and said, how did that happen? You know, he's been in lessons for two summers and can't do that. I'm flying down. She did. Wow. Took the class. We did it in four days because she had to get back. She posted it. Who knew that, you know, everybody in Staten Island has a pool? Would you ever think that? A lot of single family homes there. Yeah. Yes. And who knew that Long Island was such a, I mean, literally it's crazy, but it's, it's needed everywhere because- you know, not many people do what we do. Marlene is the pioneer of the Turk Kick Reach program. You know, that people spend months and years trying to get their child to swim. So um, right now, you know, Florida, Arizona is a very big market for drownings. I mean, it's terrible. Um, Texas. So we're going to go where we go. The mission will take us where it's supposed to. And what do you see? Like, so we did it like it was kind of the shoulder season when it was starting starting to get cold outdoor pools. What's the franchisee going to be doing in New York where you have three months, four months max season for outdoor pools? Are they doing the classes in indoor like rec centers or how does that work? Well, we we are vetted and affiliated with Marriott. So we are working with. Yeah. And some health clubs were working on trying to establish partnerships with uh, Lifetime Fitness and things so they can bring something substantial to their guests and also makes a revenue. I like that. So you'll have nationwide uh, partnerships with like Marriott, which is one of the largest franchises out there. There you go. Very cool. That's the goal. So, Well, I've enjoyed this conversation today. I've learned a lot. Is there anything that you would like to conclude with for prospective uh, franchisees? What I would say to anyone looking for a franchise, make sure you're passionate about what you're doing. 
because you're getting involved in something that could be a, is life changing for you. I always tell people when they when they come to our booth or that they call, do you love children? Do you love the water? Do you have a passion for saving children from drowning? If you do, then you have called the right company. <laughs> you know, if not, I totally understand. So what I'll say to anybody out there looking, make sure you're passionate about what you do. In my opinion, of course, because I have been a parent who almost lost a child and now I have run this company. This is probably one of the greatest opportunities. You don't need any brick and mortar. It's not a big investment. Your return is incredible. And most importantly, you're doing something that's a feel good, do good kind of business. You're out there saving lives. And by the way, we do teach adults. Are you a baseball fan, Patrick? Um, I'm, I'm, I enjoy baseball. Do you know a guy named Andre Dawson? Sounds familiar. Hall of Famer. He's right here on my shirt. Marlene and I taught Andre. 17 years ago. Oh, wow. He's very big. You can Google him. And he has been our national spokesperson for 17 years Incredible. working with us. So, And we taught him as an adult. He had a trauma. That happens to a lot of adults. A lot of adults who come to Orlando and are at the resorts, they want to take it off their bucket list. We teach them to. Our franchisees, they can go all the way from nine months to adults. It's just, it's limitless what they can do. There's the, a stigma um, too. Like if you're an adult and you don't know how to swim, it's something that you don't, exactly. you hide and, and it shouldn't be. It's such a great joy. I love yeah. swimming, surfing, kite surfing. I, I live in the water. So for to not go. have so that, you get it. I mean. Look, I always tell these adults and I teach the franchisees, not everybody can learn everything. So it doesn't matter at what stage in your life you learn how to swim. Swimming is probably one of the only sports that can literally save your life. So look, Layla went from not knowing how to swim, being turned down by every other swim school to is an unbelievable powerhouse who actually taught Tim Tebow how to surf. Huh. Very cool. Right. So we have some, we have some amazing stories for franchisees to, you know, be part of. I feel like you could probably like start a podcast and just interview the the prior uh, these thousands of kids like where they are later in their life uh, with you know what with their career. Well, Marlene's are now becoming recyclable, <laughs> so she's teaching kids of kids she taught. That's very cool. It's crazy, but well, Mindy, I really appreciate the opportunity yeah, to speak about this. It's been a this. pleasure. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the, the service that I received through Baby Otter Swim School and especially the instructor and new franchisee here in Coral Gables, Florida. Um, we'll be sure to include links. Uh, so those those that are interested in a franchise opportunity with Baby Otter Swim School can reach out. Behind Mindy, you can see for those who are watching on YouTube, 188-SWIM-KID. I imagine that's more for people that want to sign up for a lesson, but you could probably get re rerouted to for a franchise opportunity. You will 100% get rerouted. It's 888 swim kid. So, uh, yep. Anybody calls in from any of the territories goes right over to them. Awesome. Well, Mindy, I'm, I'm glad to get the message out and, and to hopefully Thank save you, some, some lives through your efforts. That's what we hope. And we'll speak soon about little Olivia. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thanks so much.